here. Share screen, and we are starting to share. Awesome. And I did not do the right one. Let's see. Come on, you. Yep. Perfect. How is everybody doing on this gloomier Thursday? Very, very typhoony. Speaking of islands, kind of typhoony uh, Thursday. Pretty decent. Except in the cleansing rain. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to another lecture, lecture 17 to be exact, on object relational mappings with yours truly sipping a bit of coffee. So I'm going to be taking sips immediately through this, but I hope everyone brought their own cup of coffee because I'm going to be needing a lot of interaction tonight, excitement, because we are only a few steps away from graduation, and I am super stoked to see everybody cross that line. So I hope you are all, all are as well. Can't talk. Jeez which is not good for a lecture. So let's get going here. So object relational mapping, as we talked about last time, it's the exact same thing. So we're on take two tonight. So we had to read one to three, those sections last time, and this time we're on four to five. But in this lecture, we're gonna com be combining everything and creating something here to actually see how everything works. As always, before we dive into that, we always need to talk about announcements and I need to get my Slack up so I don't mess up there. And all the announcements tonight are no announcements. So that is easy enough. Don't forget about assignment four as always. And don't forget about studio 19 that is right around the corner too. Those are our last two big assignments that need to be turned in in order for lift or for LC 101 to be completed and to be eligible for LC 101 or for, for lift off. All right. That being said, let's talk about last lecture. Also, if you're not on mute, can you please uh, mute? I'm hearing background noise from somebody. I'm going to have to find it. All right, give me one second, everybody. There should be a mute all button. There is, but it's hard when I'm sharing. There you go. There we go. Awesome. All righty. Let's keep going. Don't forget, if you do want to unmute, it's completely fine. I don't mind that at all. Just make sure you remute yourself after you're done asking your questions or any providing any kind of commentary. All right. So let's talk about last lecture. We didn't have the best relationship last time because our relationships were absolutely mismanaged and mixed up, just kind of swapped. The, the actual concepts were still there but we want to kind of just review them to make sure we truly solidify what we were talking about last time and actually make sure we're on the same page. So let's begin by doing that. As always, we're talking about two specific perspectives, the dog's perspective and the owner's perspectives. As always, we have that dog and we have that owner, but in this case, we're going to look at it just from a slightly different way and looking at it from a left to right perspective. The dog in this case is on the left and the owner is on the right. So with these perspectives, let's keep this in mind. So help me answer these questions. When it comes to the owner to the dog, how, does, how is the owner related to the dog? Is it related in a one kind of relationship or a many kind of relationship? One to many, many to one. So, it would, so we're not gonna talk about many to one or one to many, it's really just breaking it down here. In the perspective of the owner to the dog on the right hand side, one can one. the owner one own many. one dog or many dogs? One. One. Many. The owner can actually own many dogs. Many dogs. An owner can have many dogs. Well, a dog can only have one owner. So in this context, the right side of our perspective would be many. Again, the owner can own many dogs. On the left-hand side, for the dog's perspective, how is the dog related to the owner? How many owners can a dog have? One. one. Exactly, one. So now we know our left-hand side and our right-hand side, but this is where it gets confusing. And as clearly, this is where I got tripped up, is that it's not left to right here, but instead we have a right to left relationship. That's how we create our annotation. So in this case, how these two are related in the perspective of the dog is a many to one relationship. So that's always, 
a right to left, sorry. It will be a right to left, yes. And we'll take a closer look at what we mean by right to left in, in the context of a code here, but it will be right to left. So let's take a look at that code. But before we actually do that, help me build it. How do we create a dog entity or a dog model that's an entity? How do we start? Who can help add, me? Add entity. Very good. And what would be the next part? Public class dog. Very good. At entity, that annotation at the top, and then public class dog. I'll be kind here. I'll give us some of those uh, properties for our dog, the ID, name, and age. And then also the annotations at the top for ID and generated value. Nothing different there. But my question to you is, what kind of constructor do we need to include in an entity? Do we always, always, always need to include? Blank. Blank constructor. Very good. An empty constructor, a blank constructor. Very good. This always needs to be in our entity. And then we can add whatever constructors we want after that, as well as the appropriate getters and setters. Now, we are talking about our perspectives, our right and our left sides of our annotation. Remember, we go from right to left. Looking at dog here, we're in the dog class. We're looking at the dog's perspective. Therefore, the dog is the left side of our annotation. Moreover, we bring in the owner, which so again, the dog can only have one owner. This portion here is our right perspective, our right point of view. Remember, we go right from left. So what would be our relationship here? Many to one. Many to one. Very good. We would be a many to one because our right side, the owner, can have many dogs. Our left-hand side dog can only have one owner. Therefore, it's many to one. Looking at our code, we've done this before previously. We go into our dog object and we have the wrong thing open here. Close your eyes. We go to our dog and we have our many to one annotation here. And then I added some validation. Just saying it can't be null. But this is how we would look at it in code. We've seen this before. We did this last class. This is the first side of our relationship. If there's not any questions, we're going to move on to the other side. Coming back here, we know our dog is one perspective, but we're going to go ahead and flip our point of view to have the owner on the left-hand side and then our dog on the right-hand side. So help me out with this one. From the dog's perspective, is it one or many? One owner. one owner, very good. From the owner's perspective? Many dogs. Many dogs. In this case, what would our annotation be? One, one, to, one to many. Very good, right one to many. left, one to many. Very, very good. So this is how we would create this annotation. Again, we're just looking at this at a millions high level view Let's dive into the coding section. We bring back owner here. Before we actually look at that perspective, real quick, which annotation sets the primary key? Add ID. Oh, wait. Very good. Sorry. You're very, yeah, absolutely right. The next one is, how about when we want to auto-generate our primary keys? At generated, At generated value. value. Very good. At generated value. Those are those two very important annotations we need on our primary key within our entity. So let's bring in that array list of dogs, because again, an owner can own many dogs. Remind me, what's the relationship here for this? One too many. One too many. Very good, because our dogs can only have one owner. Well, the owner can have many dogs, one to many. This is the relationship we have here. Going back to our code and seeing how we implemented this last time, we have that one to many here. Now, one thing I want to call out, but not briefly, or not really dive too much into, is this map by. You might see this occasionally in your in the examples on uh, on uh, on the exercises and things like that. This mapped by will typically be on a one to many that relates to a many to one. This is helping out hibernate, understand who's going to be essentially in control of the foreign key. Remember that the foreign key is what's connecting the dog table to the owner table to relate that information. 
So why you use MapBuy here and there, again, I don't want to dive too much into it, but it's essentially to help out Hibernate understand the true connections and who's really in charge of the connections between the tables. So it says mapped by owner, because I'm trying to map to the dog table who contains the foreign key that relates back to the owner table. I know from just vocalizing that, that doesn't really make probably too much sense. But if you watched the last lecture about how that foreign key relates to the owner table, just know that that connection in how we did it in MySQL is created by using this map by annotation. So again, don't want to dive too much into it. If you have any questions, feel free to directly message me and I'm happy to give a better explanation. Um, if many people ex uh, want that explanation, just let me know and I can include it in the next lecture. All right, so we have our one-to-many and our many-to-one, but we haven't done anything with this. We need to actually go through and try to relate an owner to a dog using our web application. We've done it in the MySQL many times, but we've never actually done this on the web part. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do real quick is not go there. No, 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 dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. I'm sure that people love this setting, but I do not. All right. Let's try this again. Okay, I think they changed that on me. All right, anyway, I'm gonna come in here and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna just drop these tables here so we can start from scratch. So drop three tables. Yeah, sure, why not review it? Execute and all those tables are dropped. Let's go back here, stop our server, make sure it's stopped and then rerun it. So. What I did is that in, for, uh, for just basically time purposes, what I have created was that we had an owner controller before, but now I have an owner create form here. This owner create form, if we go down and see it, all it is, and it's, I promise it's nothing that we have not seen before. It's simply just a form that takes in an owner's name and an owner's city and then sends it back to our owner controller to post it to our database. So as we can see this post mapping, what it does is it takes in this owner repository and saves that owner that we created using our models. Nothing here is different. I just wanted to show you that this is something I added that we haven't done together. We'll see the true magic here in a moment. So let's go over to our localhost 8080. And I don't think I have a website at the true index there. Oh, I do, look at that, that's cool. And we're going to say dog slash create because we want to create a dog and we want to associate the owner. I come into here and I see that down here for my owner, I have no owners selectable. So what I'm going to do is actually go to owner slash create. And now I'm going to create an owner's name. I'll just use my name and we'll say St. Louis. And then we're going to create that owner. This comes back to our typical view side of all of our owners. We have our name and our city that's in a little table here. So all a-okay. So let's go back and over to that dog slash create and see what's there now. Fantastic, we actually have an owner here. So now I'm gonna name it Stark, age of seven, and then press create. So what I just did was that I associated an owner here with my dog. And let's actually see what happened in the database. We're gonna come back here and refresh all. We're gonna come into dog. We ran this query and I'm sorry if the font's a little small here, but as we can see, we have the ID of the dog is two, the age seven, the name is Stark, and then our owner ID, which the ID is one. Somehow this data is being related to our owner table. So let's go ahead and take a look at that owner table. Over here, we see we have an owner ID of one, which is awesome to see. That's who's related to our dog now. We see a city of St. Louis and a name of Kyle. <clears throat> this information has been saved to our database properly. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code and see how this happened. So any, we're, okay, so if we created that from the dog form, what controller do we need to go and look in to see where this is all working at? Can anyone hint at what controller we're gonna be looking at? Dog. You're looking at the dog control here. So which one, whenever I click the create button, would actually get executed? Would it be the git mapping or the post mapping? Post. The post mapping. So we're gonna come down here and see the post mapping. 
So as we can see here, we're just getting back a dog model, passed back into our attributes. Again, just as a model. And then of course it has errors. We return the create form with the errors presented, but then we redirect the show and then we save my dog. We see nothing here in the controller that's actually tying that owner in there. What's happening is that the models are actually being binded behind the scenes and utilizing Hibernate to separate the data to be saved into our MySQL database. So I don't wanna confuse anybody too much, but I wanted to take you through exactly how this is happening behind the scenes. So it's not too magical when you're actually seeing this. So essentially, if we go over to the dog create form, the one thing you need to see is that we are taking in this dog.owner field. This is the field we're creating. And when we actually select an owner here, the ID and the whole reference of that owner gets tied back into our dog object hence binding it into one model that then we can save to hibernate, which splits it into its separate tables. Now, that was a lot being said. So take a breath and let me know if anybody wants or has any questions or wants to go over any of that more in depth. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the one thing to take away from all that, if you don't want to dive too much over that, or not even think about what I just said, is just know that the model binding is truly what's helping, uh, helping it bind the owner to the dog. That is, uh, yeah, that is the model binding at work. Then it comes to hibernate when we come to the dog controller and we save it. Hibernate goes in there and sees that many to one and one to many relationship and splits it into its own tables. This is where the two technologies really diverge. So make sure in order for this save to work properly, we have to have that many to one and one to many relationship in the dog table. All right, this is everything I wanted to go over to complete what we were supposed to talk about last lecture, but now I wanted to bring it into here. So hopefully everyone still has a smile on. Hopefully it's still, still two thumbs up there because we're gonna move on to something more fun. Thank you everybody for smiling. I see that PJ, awesome Curtis, thank you very much. We're gonna keep going here. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out. So everybody take a deep breath. Everything's cool, everything's fine. There we go, in, out, and let's go. Yes. Okay, so we pass in empty constructors but with using Hibernate and um, forms, does um, will we ever get back to like overloading constructors or just using the constructors in general, even though we're using Hibernate and the database and forms? Yes, absolutely. Because right now we're just using forms to create objects. That's why we use those empty constructors. But what if after they press create me a million dogs, like automatically, if you, make, you create a button that does that, you're going to create then an application that would create a million dogs automatically. Hence then you would need a custom constructor. So right now that empty constructor is because the user is populating the data, but overloading in the constructors will still be useful if your machine or your application has to do so. So yes, that might resurface itself. Today it won't, but definitely in your upcoming projects, it definitely might. Great question. Anybody else have any other questions? All righty, let's get to it then. Dogs and their bones. So we know that between a dog and a bone, as we talked about last time, if one dog or one bone to two dogs does not work, you're gonna have a dog fight on your hands. So in this case, we're talking about one dog to one bone here. Hence, a dog can only have one bone and a bone can only have one dog. Hence, in this case, we have a one-to-one -one relationship. This is a, just a very stereotypical one-to-one -one relationship. One dog, one bone, end of story. <laughs> but let's talk about something a little bit more. We're gonna take ourselves back here to the owner versus the dog class. We have our owner class over here with the dogs and our dog class over here with the owner. Owner has a list of dogs and dog has an owner inside of it. These two objects have information that are related to each other. They're sharing information back and forth. This is called a bi-directional information sharing between objects. You can call, you can get information about the owner from the dog. 
you can get information about the dogs from the owner. File directional. But this is not always a thing. Looking again at that, uh, looking again at the owner, the owner will share information with the dog about itself and vice versa. The dog will share information about itself. Again, that's the biodirectional. But like I said, it's not, not exactly always the case. Let's look at another scenario, the one we just talked about, the dog and its bone. When the dog, the dog essentially wants to know about its bone. We want to make sure that the dog knows exactly where its bone is, like what its flavor is, where the berry spot is. It needs to know about that bone. But let's take a look at the bone a little bit closer here. When we're determining if two objects should share information back and forth, aka be biodirectional, you need to make sure that it has a good reason for that information to be shared. Oversharing information can be bad. If an object has access to too many other objects, well, that's just information overload, but also possibly a safety concern. So it's always good to have a reason of why information should be shared back and forth. I don't see any reason why this bone should share information with my dog or know about my dog. I think it only, the dog only needs to know about its bone. Therefore, I don't think it should, or the dog object should belong to the bone class. Hence, I'm going to create a unidirectional relationship between these two. Now, I do want to call something out really briefly that this is completely my opinion. So do not think that the way I'm constructing this is the only way to do it. I'm doing this more for an example, but I think that the dog to the bone unidirectional thing would be the best way to just show everybody how this exactly works and why we would implement it this way. If for whatever reason you're creating an awesome dog app and you think that the bone needs to know about the dog, then go for it. I'm just one guy with an opinion. So feel free to take your own own advice and just make sure you question yourself before you actually implement it. Again, answer those questions. Do you truly need this? And if the answer is yes, you can provide a, re provide a reason. Build it. You're the artist here. All right. So that being said, now we're on all on the same page. We're going to go with this unidirectional approach here from the dog to the bone. So let's take a look at exactly how we do this. We got to bring in that dog back. Fantastic. We have our owner there. It's that many to one relationship. Everybody's happy. And now we're going to bring in that one to one bone class. That bone class or object there has to relate to something. So we need to go ahead and build our bone class over here. I'll be nice and provide everything that we need to put into that bone class there. But as you can see on the right hand on side on the bone, there's no indicator whatsoever of anything that has to do with the dog class. It has just to do with the bone. That's it. So if you got this bone object somehow from a list or something like that, and you want to know what dog it belonged to, it can't tell you that. So there you go. That might be a design down flaw, but in this case, I don't want that to happen. If another dog finds that bone for some reason out in the, in the wilderness or whatever, technically that bone can be that dog's now. So no way to relate that bone back to the dog. That's what I'm getting here. So this is called a unidirectional information flow. Oh shoot. So, Sorry. Everybody good? Yep. All right. <laughs> now what I like to hear is like, okay, what did I do this time? <laughs> All right. So now that we under now that we are happy with our unidirectional flow here, let's go ahead and go back over and build our bone. So we're gonna come over here to our models, right click, new, and then we're gonna do a Java class, of course. We're gonna say bone, fantastic. And then someone talk me through this. What do I need to add up here? Add entity. Very good. Add entity. Oh, and I should have just clicked enter. There we go. Import class. Persistence. Fantastic. And always at the top. I haven't asked this question in a while. What always goes at the top? Who can tell me? What ID? We have three things. Remember? Always at the top, always in the middle, always at the bottom. Variables. Very good. Class variables. Awesome job. So at the very top, we're going to say private. And then ID. We always start with our ID here. And then we always say integer ID. ID. And then there we go. What are our two annotations that we're going to add on top of this one? Add ID and generator okay. values. Very good. Alrighty. And bring that ID in there, import class. Um, I do want to call this out while I'm doing this, is that if for whatever reason, when you do start new projects and it is not finding the persistence layer, remember to build your Gradles. 
Uh, there were a few students that were having just that kind of uh, small issue there. So just want to remind everybody that if your persistence layer isn't being found for whatever reason, try to rebuild your Gradle from there. Um, if that still doesn't work, then definitely reach out. All right, for a bone, I'm going to say berry spot. Awesome. And then private string, the seasoning, because I couldn't actually think of flavor today. So I was like, why not? Bones have seasonings, right? So public bone. There we go. And now we need to create the appropriate getters and setters. So what I'm going to do just to do it a little bit faster, we come down here to generate, let's say getters and setters. And I know what I'm about to do. Stick with me. I said all of them. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to remove the set ID because once our ID is set by the database, I never want it to be set again. All right. So there we go. We have our bone class intact here. So that's all there. We have our entity. It looks good. Am I missing anything? Anybody got anything for me? I think we're good here. So in this case, now that we have this created, let's go over to the dog class and get these things attached. We're going to come down here. What kind of relationship does the bone have to the dog again? One to one. Very good. A one to one. And then we'll say private bone. And we have to give the variable a name. So there we go. Bone it is. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so we have a relationship here. We just built this relationship for a bone to be in a dog. And then the bone entity there to create a table whenever our server restarts. But one thing I'm going to add here is that this, well, actually, I want it to be, well, no, we're going to say not null. I don't want this to be not null. A dog should have its bone, right? Every dog should have a bone. So we're going to say this not null. If it is null, we're going to say the message should be dog should have a bone. Cool. Now let's go ahead and take this and hook it up into our HTML. Right now, if we tried to actually create a dog, we would not be a happy camper. We're going to be missing some fields and it would not actually work. So we're going to go ahead and include some information about the bone down here in our dog create form. How I got to my dog create form is I went to the dog controller. I know my git mapping. When someone wants to create a dog, I return back the dog slash dog create form dot HTML. That's why I'm there. Dog create form. Let's start creating some things for a bone. So I want it to have a, it's going to have two fields in it. So I'm going to copy up here this input, come down here. And just to give me some like headers to tell me when my bone information starts, I'm gonna say like an H4 here and say bone info. Why not? There we go. And then I'm gonna paste this twice. I'm gonna say this one is gonna be the berry spot. And then this one is going to be, I'm gonna say flavor here, but we all know it's seasoning. I don't know why I said seasoning. I have no idea. All right. So now comes the true magic here of getting things hooked up. Our field is no longer the dog name here. I remember I copied and pasted this. What's our true field here that we need to get? Bone. Say that again. Bone. It is bone. Very good. And this one in particular, we're going to try to do the berry spot. So again, I'm going to put berry spot here. I'm going to go into my dog class. This is what this is doing. Go into my dog class. It's going to find bone here, the getter for bone. And then get the berry spot, those other getters and setters we did, which reminds me, we do need to come down here. Very, very important. Once you add that thing, we need to come back in here, generate our getters and setters for bone. And there we go. Now we have a getter and setter. Fantastic. So it would go into the bone using that getter, and then it would go into the bone and get the berry spot from that getter, the get berry spot. That's what this is doing here. So that's the field we actually need. And in case there's any errors there, we're going to put that there. Who can tell me the second one we need to put in here? It's not the berry spot. What is it? Seasoning. Very good. All right. So we have our berry. We have our seasoning. I think that is it. I guess only one way to find out here. Restarting our server and seeing what we're going to do here. What are we feeling? Are we feeling 500? Are we feeling like it's going to go through? Oh, silence. No news is good news? 
now. Uh oh. Oh no. Flunky constraints get to the base. Oh no. All right. So what we're going to do is come over here to these tables and we're going to just drop all of them because we just added a brand new uh, table that it's going to relate to, the dog's going to relate to. So what I'm going to do is select all these, right click, and then drop those tables. Review SQL. I don't know why I keep clicking that, but I don't need to do that. There we go. They're all dropped. Let's try this again. Awesome possum. We got it all started up. Remember when you do create a new connection to another database, excuse me, to another table, I would do recommend dropping those tables and then redoing it. Because again, as you saw, there's constraints there. When you build that relationship between another table, it's going to be like, where's my foreign key? You promised me you're going to have a foreign key. Why isn't it here? And SQL is just going to whine. And at that point, just delete everything and make it stop whining. That's how you can fix that right there. So that's how we build that. All right, let's go over to our dog create now and see how we're doing. We're going to come up here. Someone give me a dog name. Rue. <laughs> what is it? Rue? Rue. Oh, yeah. Rue. Okay. We're going to say six years old. Why not? The owner is going to be, oh no, we don't have an owner. Let's go over to the owner slash create. We'll say Kyle again. We'll say St. Louis. There we go. Create. Refresh that. Perfect. We have Rue. We got an age of six. We have an owner named Kyle. We have a berry spot. Where would a dog bury a bone for $500? The yard. The yard. Okay. And the flavoring today is going to be bacon. All right. Create that. And let's see what we got here. Oh, no. We got a 500 back. Let's see what's going on. So coming down here, this one is not in all properties. Oh no, I totally do have that not in all. We do not want to have that. Come back over here. That's what happens when I try to add my own twist to something. There we go. Let's restart that. It did not like the not and all because what we're doing is building that one-to-one. -one. Oh, what am I talking about? This is part of the whole thing. I was like, why am I getting tripped up here? Why did we not do this? What is actually happening here? Well, let's go ahead and rerun this and actually get a better air here to explain what's actually going on. Coming back over to our thingamabobber, press enter. Do, 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 do. There we go, we got Rue again. Yeah, it's six. We got Kyle. We got Barry spotted the yard. And then we got the flavoring of bacon. Awesome. And we come in here and oh my gosh, we crashed again. And we come in here and we see that it is referencing an unsaved transient instance. Okay, those are very complex words are what keeps uh, coders and employed. But what it truly means is that we don't have something saved in our database that we promised we would save. In this case, it's the bone. The bone is not there. So what do we actually have to do about this? That's a great question. Let's answer that. So we Bone have, repository. I'm sorry. Bone repository. Um, maybe that could be one possible way of doing it. Another easier way to do it is that we have this one-to-one -one relationship here, but what we're not doing is that when we have the one-to-one -one relationship, we need to save the bone that we're associating our dog object to. So how we do this is one of those special little things that we saw in our exercises to make sure everything gets saved that's associated with our dog. And that's a thing called, oh, there's the, there's the bells, if anyone's missing them. It is the cascade. This cascade will tell Hibernate when a dog object is being saved to save the bone object that is associated with it to its own table. That is what we're missing here. So the cascade will help us out in this one-to-one -one relationship by telling it to save that bone instance. So let's go ahead and go back and add that. All right, and real quick, who can tell me what this is called? 
when you have this dot all here, what kind of data type technically is this? It starts with an E. Enum? No. Enum, very good. Enum, enum, whatever you want to call it, if you didn't watch Teletubbies. So yes, that is exactly what that is. So uh, if you see that dot all enumerator, has a lot of options there behind it. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and restart our server and see what's going on. And it stopped raining for five seconds, awesome. Almost there. Perfect, moving over. Over one more time, coming back to our dog create here, refreshing as always. Come in here, we say Rue, we say age of six, we say our berry spot is the yard with that owner Kyle and the flavor of bacon. That's who I love bacon. And there we go. Now everything's working. Awesome. And we just needed that cascade in order to save that bone instance into our database. But don't take my word for it. Let's go ahead and see what it's doing. Coming back here. We're gonna right click, refresh all. We come into our tables and look at all the fun tables we have now. If we go into our dog class or a dog table, we see now that we have two small things to, for people to see. There we go. We have an ID of four again for our dog. We have a Roo dog at age of six and now a bone ID and an owner ID. This bone ID, as you all might have guessed, relates to the bone table which we have now with the berry spot of the yard and the seasoning of bacon. Again, this is associating our information in the database. The one thing I wanna call out here is that we didn't even have to create a bone repository to save any of this. It did it for us all automatically by using that cascade. That's the power of it. We didn't have to go into the bone repository and dot save. This one-to-one -one relationship is cascading that information and saving it into MySQL saving us some lines of code, which is great for me and great for all of us. So this is the power of one-to-one -one relationships. Any questions about any of this? Oh, uh, would you ever not want to use Cascade? Yes, if you don't want the object to be resaved for whatever reason, but as you saw, if you're making an entity and you don't have that object saved or something taking care of it for you, you will run into errors. So the best thing to do is make sure that if you're not gonna use Cascade, that you're saving it in another way, such as like on the owner table, you're saving the owner separately, and then you're relating it to the dog, that's fine, we didn't use Cascade there. I would have to save my bone instance separately and then associate it, which again takes more lines of code, but technically you don't have to use Cascade at that time. So it's about how you wanna implement it, um, just know that the tool is there. Great question, Lisa. Would it make sense to use an enum for a bone type for a larger program slash application? That would be true if you want to do an enumerator. Remember, once you make an enumerator, they could never add another bone type ever to the application, at least not easily. So if you want to truly reduce the customization of a bone type, then the answer is yes. Remember, enumerators are there to set limitations to the amount of selections a user has. or even the seasoning, either one. You can absolutely do that, but remember, the enum is there to set limitations. Awesome question. All right. Um, I see someone's typing a question also. Feel free to speak it out. We do have to keep going. We're a bit behind here. Sheila, did you have a question? Sheila? Okay. Why was the bone table, why didn't the bone table start with the ID number one? So remember our auto-generate IDs, that's a great question. Remember our auto-generate IDs in our MySQL database will increment our IDs for us through all the tables. The ID number one can be at any of those tables. So one starts at maybe the dog table, then two is over at the owner table, three could be at the bone table, but it will continue to increment through these numbers. It doesn't mean necessarily that the ID will stay consistent table to table. MySQL for one schema will just keep account of the unique number and assign it to the table, whoever asks for it. So that's why I didn't start with number one. It's because it's kind of a roundabout way 
of MySQL for that schema passing out numbers as they come. So that is why one doesn't, it doesn't start with one all the time in the table. It could start with a different number. So does a system like, uh, for example, like your college ID or something like that, they're typically, you know, I don't see them with giant chunks in between them. But do they also create like an ID that is not a primary key? Or what? Because then I would think that there would be huge gaps in the in the IDs. So the way we're generating IDs right now is is very to the point. Um, it's it's the most simplistic approach we could possibly do in a database. When you get to more complex databases, such as student databases or or billing databases, things along those lines, they use much longer, more complex identifiers. So to answer your question. Uh, there would be large gaps if if student repositories or student databases did this way, but they actually take a much more different approach at assigning their IDs. We are just going with the more straightforward approach with MySQL because we don't need that yet. But that is a good question. I do want to tell you that that there are definitely different ways of uh, creating unique identifiers for tables than just incrementing one to whatever a million. So does that answer your question or was I completely going off on a wrong tangent? No, no, that's it. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. In an application where we add to class or classes, do you have to update the tables in SQL to eliminate the need to drop tables for syncing? Oh, so if you wanted to essentially not have to drop all the tables and have Hibernate A okay with it, then yes, you will automatically need to, you will need to update your table to have that column. Hence, what keyword do we use again? Who can tell me what keyword we use to add a column to a table? Insert, insert or alter? alter? I'll give it to you, it's alter. Yes, we would use alter to create that column. So <laughs> if you didn't wanna drop all your tables, alter would be a way to do that. Um, that is called database management and it is a pain in the tush when your boss asks you to do it. I am speaking from experience. So uh, hope you never have to do that. That's why it's just great to drop the tables and have a better day. All right, any other questions? Okay, in that case, we're gonna move on here. So we have this cascade. Uh, that's what we had to do here for this one one Just make sure that you remember that this is now in your toolbox. Moving on, we're gonna talk about the flow of a modern application. This is my bread and butter. I make websites all day. So I, I'm a huge JavaScript, HTML, TypeScript, blah, 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 whatever, huge fanatic. And one thing I do is website design all day, every day. So I'm gonna talk about real quick, the flow of the modern website. As always, we just saw we have a showing of all of our dogs. We show our dogs to the user. And from there, they're able to create a dog if they wanna add it to the list. This is nothing new. We show all the dogs and be like, okay, do you wanna add a new dog? Like, absolutely. So we bring them to the form. You've seen this flow. Now, one more part of the flow I wanna add and what you've seen in your examples that is very, very typical because that's what the user typically expects if you go to any other form that you use. <laughs> so once you create the dog, you wanna go directly to the details of that dog. That here is what we wanna do. So we wanna actually create a details page for the dog once they create it to show all the information that we have provided for it. After that, of course, the user can go right back to the showing of all the dogs, A-OK. -okay. But today, what we want to do is actually create this details page for this dog. Excuse me, oh my gosh. So let's go ahead and dive into that. Going into our dog, we're going to start at the dog controller. And what we want to do is create a page that shows the information for that dog in particular. So if I want to show information, what type of mapping do I use? Mapping? Yeah. Remember, if we perform an action, clicking a button, typing in something, and sending information back, that's when we use a post mapping. When we want to see, when we want to render, when we want to view information, we use a get mapping. In this case, I'm going to create a get mapping for details. Mm -hmm. Additionally, now I have to create my public string show my dog details there we go and i'm going to return just an empty string right now because i don't know exactly know what i'm going to put in here so scrolling to the very top why I didn't put in slash dog is because remember we have our request mapping up here 
this allows us to create that subdirectory automatically for us. We don't have to type in slash dog because we put it up here. It saves us again a few characters. This is great. So I just put in details. Now, one thing I need to know is that when the user types in slash dog slash details, I need them to tell me in particular what dog they want to see. So I want to provide that information in the parameters. If we were typing in this URL into the URL bar, what is the first character that tells us that the parameters start here? Question mark. Very good, the question mark. Then what comes next? That's all I got. Well. It actually, well, that's completely fine. The next thing that comes after the question marks that tells us again the parameters begin is the name of the parameter. So I would say dog ID. It's the name of my parameter. And then just like key value pairs, we have to put an equals between them. We have a value or we have a key and now we have to have a value. I'm going to say dog ID whatever, one. Let's just go with that for an example. So in my URL here, I now have a parameter. So that means I need to take in something into my parentheses to get that parameter. Can someone tell me the annotation for that? I text Say it one more time. I request param. Very good. Request param. Fantastic. And that was not what I needed. Request param. And then we call it dog ID, which is going to be an integer. And then as always, we're going to be creating something. So we need to pass information into our template through what keyword, what class do we need to call in here to pass things like attributes to it. Model. 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 Very good. So we come in here and what we're going to do now is that I need to call over to my dog repository and get this dog ID. Can someone help me? What do we need to call to? Where do we start calling information to get stuff back from our database? I pointed you up here to give you a very strong hint. Dog repository. Dog repos very good. Dog repository. Let's say this dot dog repository. And then anybody know what method I'm going to use here? Find all by ID. Find all by ID. Very good. Well, actually, I'm going to, I should only have one. So I'm going to say find by ID actually here. Because I just want one back. Remember, our ID is unique. So we know we're only gonna get one. Find all tells me I'm gonna get a collection back. I don't want that. I want a single dog. So there better be only one with this ID because MySQL promised me that they are gonna keep things unique. So I'm gonna say dog ID here. Now, one thing that we usually, okay, so if I said, hey, here's my ID, go out and find this information. The bad part in the unfortunate like reality of all of this is that it could not exist. Somebody, maybe an intern or whatever at your work, went in and accidentally deleted your dog. Stark is gone forever. It's the saddest day you've ever had. But it's a true reality that sometimes that information might not be there. So if we just put dog here in dog, there could be problems. There could not necessarily be a dog returned here. So if we try to do anything with this, things would, I think bad things would happen. So let's take a closer look at this. We're dealing with a dilemma here. We have two sides to this story. We have our controller on the left and our database on the right. The controller on the left said, could you please give me the dog with the ID of three? And the database is like, I'm not finding that. In these kinds of cases, in these kinds of days, the controller is honestly tipped off. It is almost offended. It's saying, what the heck are you talking about? There's no, there's absolutely no way this could happen. Like, I'm so confused. In, in many cases, when this happens, it blows up. We don't want our controller to blow up. There is barely any protection if we just simply ask the database for information. If it's not there, we're going to basically have a very bad day in our controller. So what this means is that we need something to protect us, to protect us from the database letting us down. And what we use is a thing called the optional. This optional is a protection against us and the database if the database doesn't return what we expect. How we set this up is that we need to define a type in here. So we say optional with a dog. We expect a dog back. And then, of course, our variable name, my dog. 
This is how we create our optional to start protecting us from our databases mishaps. And then there's two things I really want to call out here, two main methods. The first one is going to, it's called is empty. It's going to be checking to see if there's actually something returned. It's actually going to see if or if not that something is actually coming back from the database, basically a Boolean. Yes or no, did something come back? The second method is the mydog.get method. This is actually going to get our uh, value out of the optional if there is actually something returned. So if there is a dog there, we can get it. If there is a value there, we can get it. But we should check beforehand using the first method that is empty. So let's go ahead and, that is the wrong screen. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We don't want to do a dog here. What's the class again that we need to use? Optional. Optional, very Optional. good. And then inside the pointy brackets, we have to define what? Dog. Dog. Very good dog. The type that we expect back from the database. I'm gonna, I called it my dog, so I'll keep calling it my dog. Fantastic. So what is the first thing we need to do when we get back our optional from the database? Check whether it's empty or not. We need to check if it's empty or not. Very good. So we say my dog inside of an if statement is empty. We need to check this conditional to see if it is, if it is or is not empty. If it is not empty, then we're having a great day. There's a dog in there somewhere. And we need to let that dog out. Yes, pun intended. I guess that's technically a pun from the song. But we need to let that dog out of the optional. So we're going to say dog dog equals my dog dot what? As the answer is just staring at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> dot get. Very good. Intel J already knows the answer. That's why I put it first. It can hear me. It's getting smarter by the day. So we use the mydog.get to get back that dog object that's locked away in the optional. That's how we get this. Once we do that, we can actually store us now, or actually provide this information to our model. So we say model.add attribute. We say dog. Well, actually, we can just say dog here. Because it's just going to assume that the name of the attribute is going to be dog because we're passing in a dog class. So we can do that, or if it makes you feel better, we can just put dog here, either one. So there we go. And then, da, 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 da. I'm sure, yeah, okay, cool. So if this is all A-OK, -okay, we're gonna return, and I gotta remember what my, I did this just to save us a little bit of time. Yeah, it's called show one dog, show one dog and if it doesn't so i'm going to say else here if there is no dog found what i want to do is redirect go back to the show basically back to our home page with all the dogs on it because apparently they did not go to a correct dog so i'm going to say redirect and back to show so if there's no dogs we're going to go back to that home page with all the dogs on it so this is that let's go and see what happens Oh, there we go. Come back here. Let's just say show. And I actually, before this, I have to get my dog. Oh, that one, I need to see my dog table. We need to get an ID here, uh, an ID of four. All right, so dog slash details. Details, question mark, dog ID equals four. Oh no, what happened? Oh, it's because I made a very rudimentary mistake. Dog slash show, there we go. Because we're in the dog directory, so I forgot that. You guys should have told me. You are just watching it, weren't you? You all knew what was going on. It's all okay, it's fine, it's fine. I really don't know what's going on here. You don't? No, oh, dude, I usually watch these like three times before I get the concept. <laughs> well, any questions right now uh, that you have a question about while well, our server is loading? 
it'd be really helpful if you showed us where you were finding the error in the code. Because I this is like the third time you've looked at this string of error code and been like, oh yeah, it's blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, where does he see that? For sure. And I understand that it's a very big maze in here to go see those errors. And I do apologize. Uh, I try to highlight as least as close as I can to it. So going in here, what I see is that like, okay, the class path, something didn't show one dog broken. Like, okay, that gives me kind of a hint. So an error happened, a template, well, template parsing. Okay, this doesn't tell me anything. That's literally what's going through my head. It's like, this tells me literally nothing. So I'm gonna scroll down. This right here, I'll promise you that this, I have never looked into. Mainly, or maybe here and there, but I just skip over this. It's these things right here, this cause by. This is what gives you the true meat of the error. All this up here, nothing. It's a lot of nothing. So let's go ahead and see it. It says that expression dog.toys dog show one dog. Okay, there's something wrong here with the expression dog.toys. Well, I know because I created dogs here a few, uh, about a couple days ago while mm -hmm. building this example that this shouldn't be included in the template at all. So I'm gonna go back to the template and do the show dogs or show one dog. And I see that I have an issue here with all of this. So I'm gonna just take that little thing out there. And I remove that because dog and toy doesn't exist yet. Spoiler alert, they will eventually, but it doesn't right now. So that's how I deduce that error is that once I see that there's something going wrong with a certain specific little point there on this air, that's when I start investigating that. It's like, okay, dog.toys should not exist. So hopefully that helps out a bit. The biggest thing I can say is that look at these cause bys. Those are the ones that truly give you the explanation of what's going on. Does that help at all, Alexia? Yes, thank you. All right. And there we go. We got a better thing going here. So we are now looking at our dog ID, dog age, owner, Kyle, and Barry spot. All right. So it looks like we are a okay. We have our dog details coming back. This is what we want to see. So one thing we don't have is the Barry spot. And it's because I'm not calling to that bone. So we're going to say, instead of that, we're going to say bone dot berry spot because remember in the dog there's a getter for the bone because the dog knows about the bone and the bone knows about the berry spot so we follow that chain down we start our stuff hey okay come back here and let's go ahead and refresh our page what's going to happen here oh look at that now we have a bone spot we know we're who is it? Rue is burying his bone. It's in the yard. So that's how we do these connections here. So we just set up getting our bone information into the database and now taking that information back from the database and putting it onto our website. That is what we have here. Any questions up until this point, which I'm sure there are many questions out there, but feel free to talk about anything if you want me to go into depth on anything else here. All right. In that case, let's just keep diving more and more. Oh, yeah. What's up, Curtis? Quick one. Um, would you go back to that template quickly? Absolutely. If you were just to call bone.berry spot, would that not work? It would not because we are not passing in a bone attribute here. Remember, if we go back over to the dog controller, we're only passing in one attribute only. Cool. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Let's keep going down the rabbit hole. On to the next thing. We're going to do a little bit of a mind bender. As we saw this before, this is the last thing I want to lead off last lecture with here. We have our three dogs. And then again, spoiler alert, finally comes back here. We have three toys. This is where those toys are gonna to come in. As we know already, a dog can have a toy. Self-explanatory, dog club toys. But that same dog or that same toy can be shared with another dog. But a dog can also have multiple toys. This can get very crissy crossy. A dog can have many toys and a toy can have many dogs play with it. Hence, we have the relationship 
many to many. So that is where we come in here with. So diving a little bit further into this now, we bring back our dog class. We have our owner in there, we have our bone, nothing here has changed. But now we're gonna be bringing in something new, this many to many. We're gonna bring in toys. So we come over to the right-hand side and we bring in that toy entity now. Again, I'll be very nice here. I'll provide our information here for our toy. We're gonna have our ID and then just the toy name. We're gonna keep it very simple. And then we're going to bring in the many-to-many -many in the list of dogs. Now, because we have a lot of information in the toy of how many dogs are playing with it and the dog of how many toys it can play with, I wanna have information shared between the two of who's sharing what information. So therefore, I'm creating here a what kind of relationship? Or many relationship many flow. Many. A many to many, very good. But also we're sharing information back and forth. So this is gonna be right. more along the lines of biodirectional as well. This biodirectional and unidirectional isn't gonna be something that you're going to read about. It's just some way that I typically think of the data flow to help me out understand how information is flowing. So don't feel like you have to know this biodirectional and unidirectional thing. It's there for some explanation. So we know that we're going to have this many-to-many -many relationship. So let's go ahead and hop over to our code and start building this thing. Coming in here, we're going to have our many-to-many. -many, and then we're going to say private, private list of toy. Toy. We're going to say toys equals new realist. There we go. Fantastic. As always, we see we get that red there because toy doesn't exist yet. So let's go over to our models. Right click, new, Java class, and then toy. Awesome, awesome. So if we, yeah, go and add that. Who can start me out? Add entity. Very good, add entity. And then we all, as always, start with what? Well, secondary, start with what? ID. Add ID. Very good. Add ID, add generated value, and then our private integer. Very good, everybody. Bring that in. Import the class. Bring back the persistence. Fantastico. Now we need our, what did I say? Private string, and then we're going to say a toy name. That's what we're going to do here. And then what's the kind of constructor that we always have in our entities? Always, always, always. An empty one. Empty constructor. No. Very good. And then down here, as always, as well, we generate our getters and setters. Boom, boom. There we go. We take out that setter ID, though, because that is not good. And we have there successfully created an entity in 30 seconds or less. Awesome job, everybody. So we have this, and I'm already forgetting something. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. What are we forgetting here? What's the relationship? It's bi-directional. So who am I forgetting in here? Many to many. Very good. Many to many. Do you also yeah. need a standard constructor? I'm sorry? Do you also need a standard constructor? Um, what would you want to put in that constructor? The this dot toy name equals toy name. This dot, say that again. Oh, oh uh, if you wanted to, we absolutely could. Uh, as of right now, oh, I was like, why aren't you working for me? There we go. We absolutely could. We won't use it as of right now, but we definitely can if we wanted to. Public toy. And we say string toy name. This dot toy name equals toy name. So yeah, this can actually absolutely be utilized. Again, we don't really have to do this in our application because our user is providing all the information. So that's going to be Hibernate's work with Spring and Timely doing all that information. But in case we want to do it automatically, I like it, Curtis. We'll do it. So we'll put that in there. And so now our many-to-many -many relationship is hooked up on our toy side and as well as our dog side. So that being said, we need to now be able to create a toy for a dog. So first things first, and I'm gonna go through a little bit slower, but we're gonna to go to our show dogs here. And what I'm gonna do is that I want to have an easier way to get to my dog details so I can go in there and actually link it from my homepage. 
So we have a bunch of list items here, but what I'm going to do is change it into a link. So I say a th href double quotes, then single quotes, and then we say slash dog slash details question mark dog ID and little qua uh, little quote plus dollar sign dog dot oh, what is it it is yeah dog dot dog or dog dot ID there we go now what we're doing is going to turn this I'm sorry you need an equals after dog ID um after dog ID before before the plus dog ID so or are you saying right here? Nope. After dog ID, but before the plus sign. So after the D after. dog ID that is before the plus uh, sign. In the single code one? Left, 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 left. Right here, right here? Left, left. left. Oh, okay, you're talking about this dog ID over there. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I was thinking dog ID whenever you're saying that. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. Equal sign there. <laughs> so like Marco Polo over here. All right. No, you're absolutely right. We had to put that uh, equal sign there because, of course, we had to separate our key with our uh, parameter value. So awesome job. Thank you. So we have that. And so now we can get to our dog details page pretty easily. So now that we have that and we know we're going to be getting toys back, and I assume we're going to get toys back because I just made that many to many relationship. So in the future here, for again, like plot. Uh, Plot spoiler, I'm going to be dropping the tables again because we're going to have that toys coming in there. But before I do that, I want to get my low hanging fruit out of the way. So I go into my show one dog form and this is where I want to put my toys. So I'm just going to put this here. Say toys. And then we are going to do an honor order list UL and then list item. And then we do a TH each equals um where am i blanking right now on toy and then dollar sign toys there for a second and i am missing something here so it should be dog dot toys there we go and then i'm going to say a th text and that is going to be dollar sign there we go and then toy dot toy name and when this actually gets printed out, we can dive into this a little bit more uh, just to see how this is working. But I, again, I want to get the low hanging fruit out of here. Toys should be showing then for this dog. So that being said, let's go ahead and get our application a little bit ready here. So we're going to come over here and we're going to refresh our tables just to make sure we get all of them. Down, 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 down. Right click and then drop four tables. Go execute. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and restart our server and see what happens. There we go. All right, we're gonna come over here now and we're gonna see what kind of tables it actually created. Special. There we go. We have our toy dogs and our dog toys. Trying to combine those two to relate the two together. So we can actually, can like, basically they're using the dog ID and the toy ID to relate themselves. So that information is saved and, and basically connected. And then we have our owner. We have our toy table and our dog table, our bone table. Awesome. Everything is looking A-OK -okay here. So let's go ahead and hop over to here and see what happens if we go to our dog four ID. Oh, look at that. It goes back to our show because we don't have a dog ID with four anymore. We dropped all those tables. So we no longer have that. So let's go ahead and create a dog. First things first, we need to be able to create the owner. So we say owner slash create. All right. There we go. Come over here to the dog slash create now. Someone give me a dog name. Waggy. What is it? Waggy, the cutest dog name. Waggy, <laughs> I love it. Waggy, age three. And then Barry Spot is gonna be that yard again. And the flavoring, anybody got a bone flavoring in mind? Mm -hmm. What is it? 
Lavender. Lavender. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know how to spell lavender. So is it ER? Lavender? Yeah. That's what it's going to be today. All right. So there we go. We created Waggy with his favorite bone, Lavender. And now we have over here our list of dogs, but now it's a link. Remember, we created that ahref. So now this is actually a link. And we click on it and we get an error. Fantastic. What's going on here now? As always, like I said, I'm going to tear these errors apart. Nothing up here is going to tell me something about show one dog is having a problem. That's who's complaining. Coming down here, we see that dog that toys is having an issue with me. All right. Properly, these toys cannot be found on the object of the model dog. And it even tells me, did you make it public? Is it not valid? What's going on here? What this is saying is that I can't access toys in dog. What the heck are you doing to me? And it's absolutely correct. I forgot to do one thing. I come over here to dog. I made toy, which is completely fine now, but what I didn't do is create a getter and a setter for it. So there's no way to access this information because the toys, the list of toys is private. So I need to have those getters and setters. Click getters and setters, click toys, press okay. And let's go ahead and restart our server. Ooh. There we go, come back here, and we come back to our dog ID of two. And now we see that everything's A-OK, -okay, but we have no toys. That's fine. Let's go ahead and start getting a way to get toys into our dog. All right, coming back here, again, to save time in my toys, I already created a cre uh, toy create form. In the toy create form, all it asks for is the actual uh, name of the toy. That's it. Um, the other one is for a dog. And what this is going to do is actually going to get the dog, uh, get the list of toys here. And then you select what toy you want to associate to that dog. That's what we have here. So let's go ahead and get to it. What I'm going to do is create a controller. So I'm going to say new, actually, I'm just going to take the dog controller, copy it, paste it. And I'm going to say the toy controller. That's okay. Add, there we go, toy controller, awesome, awesome. And then what I want to have in here is the toy repository. There we go, toy repository. Take out that. And all I want is the get and post mapping for being able to create a toy. So I'm gonna go through this very quickly because we have gone through how to set up these getters and setters and creating the form here. But again, don't forget these recordings are online. You do wanna go through this a little bit slower. So we have the create toy page. And now I'm gonna use that toy repository to find all, and instead of owners, it's gonna to be toys. There we go. Now that I'm thinking about this, this doesn't actually need to be set at all. All it needs to do is return the create page because all I want to do is type in a toy name. So let's go ahead and do that. So create a toy. Instead of a dog, I want to actually have a toy. Let's say a toy. There we go. And now we have our toy repository. And then we're gonna bring in that toy. There we go. So once we create the toy, I'm gonna to go ahead and return. Okay, so first we need to change this toy. It's gonna to be toy create form and redirect back to slash dog slash show. I want it to go back to my dogs. So you have to do the slash dog if it's in your request mapping up top. That, thank if you. It's that. Redirect. You uh, do not well, have to do it. If it was yeah. slash dog, no. If they were the same, not at all. Very good. But uh, this one is gonna be for the toys. So. Uh, good call out on that. All right, so one more thing, come down here and I'm gonna paste. So I copied it, I pasted it, I'm gonna say toy repository. Come in here, it's already changed, add it to my GitHub. Fantastic, instead of a dog here, I need a toy. That's what I want. There we go. So just like that, we have created our repository for our toys. Toy repository, awesome, awesome. And it looks like after that's all saved. So let's go ahead and restart a server and see if we can add a toy to our database. Exciting stuff. Let me make sure that nothing else in the toy repository will be starting up. I need to 
do is a toy toy name. Awesome. Create. Fantastic. Go. Want to add toy. Um, our options. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I told you guys this one is going to be action packed. Okay. Let's go over to toy slash create. Liar. What did I do? Hey, dogs, an entity. Oh, toy controller. No, that's controller there. That's controller. Uh oh. You do have something in there returning to toy slash toy controller uh, with toy controller also in the request mapping. Um, what are you seeing there? Uh, line 26. 26. Oh, that's create for Never mind. Okay. No worries. Check uh, out your variable in your template. Should have toy here. Oh, yeah, thank you. I was like, what's going on here? Yeah, as always, you need to do the model. Model, I'm forgetting something very, very, very straightforward. So we always have our model, remember, and when we're creating something new, we have to pass in an empty version of that class. So we said add attribute and we say new toy. There we go. Thank you very much, Sean. I think that was your voice, I couldn't tell. But whoever's voice it was, thank you. Voice from just somewhere in the, in the, no, not abyss, that's a bad word. No. Something. Thank you. <laughs> okay. There we go. We're started. Coming back up here. Fantastic. We're going to say chew toy. Awesome. Create. We come back here. And there we go. We actually have now a toy in our database. So let's double check that. Fantastic. All right. So now we have toys. We have dogs. And now we're going to go ahead and allow that person to add a toy to that dog. But we have to be able to do that. So we're going to go to sh show one dog. And one more thing we're going to do here is that if we want to actually add a dog, uh, add a toy to a dog, we need to actually go to a new page to make that association. Now let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we say a href and we haven't exactly created this yet, but th href equals, and then we are doing that exact same thing. So it would be a dog slash create slash, no, I'm gonna say dog slash add toy. There we go, and small quotes plus dog dot ID. And I need to add that parameter there. Question mark dog ID equals, there we go, add toy. Awesome. So we've built this HR up here. What this is going to do is that it's going to go to an add toy mapping now. So we need to go ahead and create that. So we're going to go into our dog controller. And now we need to come down here. And what's going to do is that we have to do a get mapping first because we need to show our information. So we say add toy. All good there. But now we say public string add toy to dog. Now who can tell me the parameter that we passed in here? Hmm. If we go back here to show dog, or uh, yeah, show one dog, what's the parameter that I passed in here to this href? Dog ID. Very good, dog ID. So I'm gonna have to take that in through my parameters in my dog controller using that request param. It's an integer, so I say integer, dog ID. And then as always, we take in that model. So there we go, now we're getting back that dog ID. So it's saying here, I wanna add a, t I wanna add a toy to a dog, but you need to tell me what dog you want me to add it to. So first things first, you gotta give me the dog ID. But once we have the dog ID, what can we do? What should we do with that dog ID? What do we need to do? Find it. 
Absolutely. Sorry. Give me one second. Headphones just disconnected. There you go. That's very weird. Awesome. Okay. There we go. What we need to do is go to the dog repository and get that dog. Can you guys hear me all right? Okay. And that was very weird. Okay. Uh, let me make sure that my microphone's actually. There we go. Is that better to the person who said kind of? Yes. I hear you clearly. Okay, cool. All right. So we get this, and then what do we need to put on the left hand side here? Optional. Very good, everybody. Optional. What's it going to be returning? What do we want in here? Dog. A very good dog. My returned dog. Awesome. All right. So in this case, we're just going to assume that it's all okay. So we're going to just say dog, dog equals my return dog dot what? Yeah. Awesome. Very good. So now what we need to do is that we need to be able to pass in this dog into the model in order to attach that dog to the toy. But we also need to, just like we did when we had to create the toy, we need to pass in a list of toys for them to associate it to. So for the first time in a long time, if not ever, we have two big models that are going to be coming together to do something and join in on a relationship. In this case, we have a package, a package deal inside of this creation that we're gonna to need to talk about just briefly. In this page that we just created, this add toy that we're currently working on, the user is gonna select a toy. This toy is gonna to be sent over to the controller. But as we already discussed, it also needs a dog. So we're gonna to have to send over a toy and a dog in order to associate it inside of the controller to associate it inside of the database. Now, okay, it's just two things. That's, that's fine and dandy, but what if we had a dog, a toy, and a bone to associate together? What if we had now a play pet or cats? Things along those lines, more and more models that become more and more complex in relationships together. What I'm saying here is that this is the most simplistic example you're going to have moving forward. So therefore, data is gonna keep growing and growing, and this is gonna become a problem. So we need a better way to send over information, multiple models, and at one time. Hence enters our friend, the DTO. In other words, the data transfer object. This type of object <coughs> is used to communicate between a server and its user. And this is how we pass in a lot of information into one big huddle in order to communicate with it. So we bring in that dog and the toy, and we add it all into one object. We package it up, all of those models at once in order to send it back over. That's what this DTO is for. And we'll see this more in depth here in a second. But just to make sure we're clear, we have that add toy and we need to send over that post back over to a controller when they select the toy to be associated with the dog. But instead of sending them back separately, we're gonna package them together and send them back together. So that being said, we need to create something here called the DTO. So to do this, you'll typically see it in your data because it is definitely a part of the data layer. So we say a new package and we call it DTO to associate our DTOs together. The typical naming standard is to include the two things or the three things that are associated with each other inside the name so you know what's connected to each other. So we know it's a dog and a toy. So we'll say dog toy. We'll package it in as a class. Inside of this DTO, oh, I'm dang it, I should have said dog toy DTO. Refactor, rename, dog toy DTO. There we go. And now we include everything that's related here. So we say the private dog dog. And we say private, excuse me, uh, private toy and then toy. Import that class, import this class. And then as always, we create an empty constructor. Public dog toy DTO, an empty constructor. And then down here, we do our getters and setters. So 
So the best thing to take away from this is just think of you're taking two models and packaging them together in this new type of object. Don't let DTO scare you or, or any of the real reason why we use it. Just know it's just a packaging of two different models that we're using to send it over at one time. If you're wondering why the heck do we do this just because data gets more complicated, it also enhances security as well. If you package things in DTOs, it reduces overhead and increases security. So it is actually a very widely used concept. So that being said, we are now going to make sure that that's all fine and dandy. And we're gonna go back over to the show or back over to the dog controller. We are now going to use this DTO that we just created to associate our stuff together and send that over to the database. So what we're gonna, or not over to the database, but send it back over, over in the post. Mm. So let's go ahead and create a dog toy DTO. And sorry, did I hear a question? Sorry, toy DTO. Call it dog toy. Close new dog toy DTO. There we go. And we're going to import this. All right, dog toy dot set dog. We're going to set that dog as the one that we got back from the database. This is the first side of our DTO. So there we go. We pass in that dog there. And then the second side is actually going to stay uh, very much blank for our, for our template and our model binding to do its magic. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say model dot add attribute. And I always forget what I named that. So let me go into here to make sure I'm going to stay consistent. So the add toy, it's going to be using the dog toy, um, the dog toy attribute. So we come back over here and call it dog toy. I'm going to pass in that DTO dog toy. Fantastic. There we go. All right. Where on line 69 does a uh, dog come from in the parameter? This one right here? Yeah. We got it back from our database by using that optional oh, in I, the dog repository. Okay. I was looking at the line above it. Okay. You're all good. Nope. Great question. All right. We're going to. Is the T and toy uh, lowercase on the um, on the form? In this one right here. Good question. Let's double check. Add toy. It is not awesome. Thank you for that because I would have broken it. So there we go. Capitalize T. Fantastic. So we have the model dot add attribute dog toy dog toy. I think we are all good there. Mm, yep. Oh, and then last things last for our dog toy or add toy we need to populate the toys. So let's get back all the toys from, uh, from our repository. So we're gonna say, what is that? I need the model dot add attribute and toys. And for this one, I need to do this dot toy repository, which we haven't created yet in this class, dot find all. But we're gonna go ahead and do that. So come up here, copy this, paste it, and we're gonna say toy repository, and then the toy repository. There we go. Awesome, guys, we are almost done, I promise. The light's at the end of the tunnel. There we go, we're saving that. So now we are able to actually create the page to show uh, our users to select a toy. So let's go and make sure that works before we do the last part. So there we go, we started that up. Let's go back over here to dog show. Make sure everything's working. There we go, go in here, add toy. And now we can add this chew toy. So it's being populated, chew toys in there. If we right click, inspect, we can actually come in here and I wanna show you something, it's kind of cool. Um, body form, you have our inputs in the form group. And then we have something hidden here. So we see that we have this little hidden input this right here, we're actually passing in and saving secretly our dog object that we had inside of there. Just because our model binding needs that dog information to bind it with our toy information. And where we put that was over here in the HTML add toy, we hid all of our dog information right here from the user. 
but this is for us because again, we need to bind that dog information with our DTO, with our toy for any of this to work. And we have to keep that data around somehow. So that's why we made this input hidden. So there we go. That is what we did here. But if I press create here or add, it would just blow up. Actually, let's check. Yep, there we go, blows up. Because we haven't created our post mapping just yet. So let's go ahead and do that final thing. So we come in here to dog controller and now we have to do our post mapping. This final one, we're gonna say add toy once again. And this one's gonna be public string associate dog with toy. And what comes back is, say model attribute right now, is actually not a dog, not a toy, but the DTO itself. So we have the dog toy DTO that comes back as our model. Both of those models wrapped in one thing comes back to us. That's some great information flow right there. So we're gonna call that our dog toy. So when we come in here, so I'll bring my model just in case. Model, model. There we go. We're going to have now a dog and a toy inside of here. This is really exciting stuff because now we actually have all the information we need to save our new toy and our new uh, and our new dog information to the database. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to go into dog, or so we're gonna say, let's see, it is if toy dot, I'm gonna make sure toy, the toy does not equal null for whatever reason, and I'm in JavaScript mode right now, not null, come into here. And what we're gonna say is that we're gonna have our dog toy dot get dog, we're extra loud today, dot add, Dog toy. There we go. We're going to add this toy. What am I doing? Oh, get, yeah, get toys. Oh, oh do, get dog. Wow. Dot. Now we get our dog. Get toys. Dot add. And then add our toy to our list of, uh, add our toy to our list of toys. So we're adding our chew toy to the dog toys here. So that's what we're doing. So we're taking that toy they selected out in that form that we just created, adding it to our dog, and now we're actually gonna have to save it. So our toy is already created in the database. That's all fine and dandy, but now we need to actually update our dog. So we say this.dog repository.save, and we say dog toy, dot this dot get dog there we go by references why i'm like able to reduce a lot of these lines of code is that i'm using the references i'm using the references from the dog toy dto with the dog you can also save these into individual um variables if you wanted to if you want to say dog my dog or something like that you could say uh what is it dog toy dot get dog there we go and then you can replace some of this with that so you can say this and then say that you say that so that is basically synonymous of what i was doing there previously just to let you know i'm kind of cutting corners here a little bit to give you guys a little bit of time in the studio um but I just want to show you this after all that said and done i'm going to return a redirect back to my original dog so it'd be slash dog slash details uh but we're actually in the dog thing so i'm going to say just details question mark dog id equals plus oh gosh dog toy dot get dog dot get id because i need the actual id of the dog and what i'm going to do is take this in here there we go i'm going to say my dog instead that will be better that'll be shinier you guys all still with me i'm seeing some sleepy eyes come on almost to the end everybody Almost there. All right, return, and then we're going to redirect back to show. All right, we're going to save that, and that should be our final thing there. So let's go ahead and restart. Fingers crossed that we're not going to get a 500 slap in the face. All 
All right, it's started up. Everyone cross your fingers. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna come back in here, come back to our dog ID equals two. We're gonna go ahead and we're adding this toy now to our dog, that's gonna be ID two. Press add. And it looks like everything went through. Awesome. Everyone just, I saw a big sigh really like, thank God he's almost done. So yes, there we go. Everything's added. Let's take a final glance at our tables to see actually what happened. So there we go. Going into our dog toys here. We see now an association between our dog number two and our toy number four. Awesome. Looking at the vice versa. This one is actually not being used because we did a one-way relationship there. We related the toy with the dog and not the dog with the toy. So this table didn't actually get updated. If you wanted that to happen, we would have to do a separate save to the toy repository with the dog added to that list. So if you were wondering why this would be blank, that's exactly what happened. But I wanted to show you at least one side of the pie. If you want to try the second one, take this uh, as a challenge upon yourself to do so. But everybody, Thank you very much. Like I said, this is going to be action packed. So everybody who's still awake, awesome job. Hopefully I didn't put too many people to sleep, but this is all I have for you tonight. Hey, can I Unless ask anybody wants more. Yeah, what's up? Um, this actually is a little off topic, but um, I could not find the uh, branching um, but in, in IntelliJ. You know, like usually if you're on the bottom right of your IntelliJ screen, there's like the, the master or whatever you're in, and then you get the click on it and it scrolls up and it gives you all your possibilities of branches. Mine mm -hmm. sometimes does not have that. Um, so it depends on what project you're in. If you're in, make sure that you're actually in a get project because if you aren't, those won't show up. Uh, IntelliJ will accustom itself to a get project if it sees a uh, basically a get config file. So um, double check that you're actually in a get, uh, a get repository or a get project by running a get status on the terminal of that project. If you get back issues, I, uh, there might not be a connection between you and the GitHub yet on your project. Um, try that out. If you have any questions, ask your TAs or reach out to me and we'll look at that one indirectly. Okay, so real quick, just when you say it's a Git project, do you have to create a Git um, repository every time you branch, like create a branch? No, if, you okay. if you're creating branches, you're in a Git. So right. yeah, the, the concept of branches is definitely in a Git. So if that's happening, um, yeah, there might be an issue with IntelliJ. So yeah, absolutely. You can also check, I'm on Windows, but I have a whole uh, menu uh, for Git at the top of the screen. So if there's another place for it, it could be up there. Also true. Yeah, settings could be misconfigured too. So yeah, again, reach out to me, reach out to TAs, reach out to a colleague. We'll get that, we'll get that squared away. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? Okay. Well, then it has been exciting tonight. So hopefully everyone enjoyed all of that. Uh, if any, or let's see, come on, click there. There we go. Where's everybody's pretty faces? Come on, you. Fantastic. There we go. All right, everybody. So that is all I have for you. Like I said, so thank you very much for joining me tonight. We will have lecture on Monday. So make sure you're there at 530 and we're going to go through another one. Don't forget three more lectures until graduation. So keep up strong. Enjoy your studio tonight. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Enjoy your weekend. And I will see you all back here soon. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Bye, everybody. Bye.